So the main task that we're going to get to actually looks quite a lot like yesterday's one and it uses similar skills. Um, but you really have to think carefully about where you start when you do that task. Um, so I've got an amazing problem that was it first introduced many, many years ago, which is about thinking logically of where you start when you unpick a big problem. Very, very much looking forward to that one. It will seem quite an unusual task, but that's so much the better, isn't it? Uh, we'll kick off with looking at yesterday's work. So we start with yesterday's extend task. And yesterday we were looking at this idea that the equal sign essentially means I have the same amount on here as I have on this side. And it's about a balance between the two sides here. And on this task, we were asked for the number of possible answers. So of these questions, which have the fewest to the most different possible answers? Um, so here I've got to make these two sides balance. Now I would think about ways that I can do that with positive whole numbers. I'd have to think how many times can I multiply 8 to make a number that will be less than 30. Um, because I have to subtract from the 30. Um, so there in this box it could be 8 times 1. Um, so that would be 8 and then I could make that by subtracting from 30. It could be 8 times 2. Um, or it could be 8 times 3. But of course when I do 8 times 4... Um, then I'll have 32, which I can't make by subtracting a positive whole number. Um, so, so in this example, we have three possible answers. Um, now let's go here. In 53 subtract something equals 48 plus something. So again, I would have to think, well, how many ways can I subtract from the 53 um, to end up with this side will have to be at least 49. Um, so I could subtract there anything between 1 and 4. Because if I subtracted uh, 1, then I would add, uh, that would get me to 52 here. I could add 4 here. If I subtracted 4, that would get me to 49. And then I'd just add 1. And, and so that's the, that's the range that we're working in here. Uh, four possible answers. Now, what's about, what about 60 divided by a number equals 10 plus? Um, and here, really, the, the key thing is, is, thinking about, um, is thinking about factors of 60. So I could be doing 60 divided by 1, and that would give me 10 plus 50, because 60 divided by 1, of course, is 60. It could be 60 divided by 2. And what does 60 divided by 2 gives me? Give me That gives me 30. Um, so then it would have to be 10 plus 20. Um, it could be 60 divided by 3. And 60 divided by 3 uh, gives me 20, so that must be 10 plus 10. Um, or it could be 60 divided by 4, that gives me 15, 10 plus 5. Um, or it could actually be 60 divided by 5, and 5 times 12 is 60. Um, and so that would have to be 2 there. Uh, we just about snuck them on. So how many ways have we got there? We have got a whopping 5 ways there. Should have written down 4 ways on that one. And then let's have a look at this one. 28 divided by equals something multiplied by 2. So it could be 28 divided by 1. That's 28, and so that would have to be 14 there. Uh, 28 divided by 2 equals 14, so that would be 7 times 2. And 28 divided by 7 will give me uh, 4, which I can make with a 2 times 2. And I could actually do 28 divided by 14, that will give me 2. Uh, I can make that by doing 1 times 2. So how many answers in, uh, in this example here? I have, once again, 4. So today we're going to build on the skills we were looking at yesterday um, with equal signs and greater than and less than signs um, to get to our four number sentences challenge. Um, but today is going to be fairly unusual because what we're going to do is we're going to just recap briefly on some of that knowledge. And then we're going to look at another crucial aspect which will help us to answer the four number sentences challenge, which is which thing can we work out at first and then what do we work out next when there's, m like there's a number of possible clues that we could focus on. And we're going to do it in a fairly unusual way. I think that's fair to say. Um, so I am really looking forward to it. Uh, so we, we introduced this yesterday, the idea that 3 plus 2 is the same as 4 plus 1. They're both 5, that's why we have an equal sign. And 3 plus 3 is less than 8, which is why here we have this, uh, this sign that shows that the greater than is 8 and the less than is the 6. And then we looked at these examples and we said, well, which question can be answered in one way, which question can be answered in different ways and so on. And we decided 21 subtract 15 equals 6, only way. 
15 subtract something equals 6 plus something. Well, there's different ways. It could be 15 subtract 1 uh, equals 6 plus 8. It could be 15 subtract 2 equals 6 plus 7 and so on. Different possibilities. There, um, both sides equal 13. And then we had a look at this example. Um, so we said an answer would be 6 times 2 equals 10 plus 2. Another answer would be 6 times 3 equals 10 plus 8. And we can keep increasing the number that we're multiplying 6 by and keep increasing the amount that we're adding by. And that really, we were looking at the meaning of these signs, the equal sign, and looking at which questions can be answered in different ways. So that's one part, one of the skills you'll need for the main task today. But there is another one, and it's about thinking systematically, working um, through clues. So we're going to explore that with this fairly amazing task. Uh, now, this happens to be a question that children were given in the 1940s. So it was on a 1940s test for 11 year old children. Um, and this is the actual thing. Um, and the key thing with answering this question, and this is almost like one of two main tasks today. The key thing with answering this question is thinking, well, what information do I need to work through first? There's so much to digest. Um, so if you can answer the whole thing, if you want to have a little clue, look at a little bit of us working through the solution. But I love this task. Let me read it to you. Mary Jenkins is the leader of a guide patrol. So there are six girls in her patrol. Each has two initials. Um, so, for example, Mary Jenkins, the initials for Mary Jenkins are MJ. The initials means the first two letters of your name. Um, so the Christian names, the first name, so for Mary Jenkins, it's Mary. The Christian names for the children, the six children, are Molly, Celia, Gwen, Ruth and Sally. And the surnames for the six children are Brown, Smith, Evans, Clark and Jones. Now, you might notice there are six girls in the patrol. We're only given five names. Now, two girls have surnames and Christian names beginning with the same letter. Two are na have a uh, name Ruth, have the name Ruth. One of the twins has the same initials as the leader. And the other of the twins has the same Christian name as Evans, the girl whose surname is Evans. And then it says write down each girl's full name. So uh, pause the video, have a go. If you want to see any of how it's worked through, then play along. But otherwise, pause the video, see how you get on with this one. Well, they used to do some challenging logic in the 1940s, eh? Well, let's have a little look and I'm going to make this all a bit smaller and break it down in certain ways. Um, so first of all, we, we found out that, um, that there were two girls named Ruth. So I'm going to put another Ruth in there. I've highlighted that one in red so that you can see it. There's six girls. I've, I've tried to make the information shorter with the surnames here. Um, and then I've got all these different clues and I have to think where to start. Well, something that I know I can start with is this. I, I could start with two girls have names beginning with the same letter. Because actually, if I look at the combinations of names, I know that there's only two possible combinations, Sally Smith and Celia Clark. Uh, there's no other names that it could be where, where they have matching um, um, for same letter for the first name and the surname. So already I can eliminate and well, I can eliminate. I know that the names are Sally Smith and Celia Clark. Um, and then uh, the next thing I would look at is this. Um, there is another Jones. Um, so it says one of the twins initials is MJ, um, the, the same as, as our um, patrol leader. Um, so actually the only surname that must be belonging to the twins and the twins must have the same surname is Jones. There's another Jones. And so one of the twins must be Molly Jones. Um, then it says one of the twins has the same Christian name as Evans. So we know that twin surname is Jones um, and the name that's repeated twice is Ruth. So it must be Ruth Jones as well. And then that must also leave Ruth Evans. Now, how can we work out the last one? Well, it's the only one left. So uh, Gwen Brown, it must be Gwen Brown. No clues relating to it, but the only surname left is Brown. The only Christian name left is Gwen. Gwen Brown there. Now, the main task we've got today, it's actually a very similar skill. So we've got to understand about the equal signs, the greater than signs, uh, and, um, and we've also got to think, well, where do we start? What do we know for sure? Which numbers can only go in this place? Which numbers can't go in another? 
Um, and that's some of the thought process you'll have to go through to position each of these numbers once in these gaps. So there's your main task, get stuck right in. And I wonder if you can see the similarity with what we've just looked at. Pause the video and have a great go at that. So let's see if we can unpick some of the logic here. Um, so I'd start off by thinking, well, which number can go in the orange box, the box I've just made orange? Um, and actually, there's only one. Um, so if I do 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, that gets me to 16. Um, so this side has got to be more than 16. It has got to be the 9. 9 is the only number that can go in that orange box. So now, well, where can the 8 go? It was the, my next line in thinking. And actually, it can't go here because 8 divided by 2 equals 4. It also can't be in here because 9 subtract 8 is 1. And, and that, that would make this incorrect because this side has got to be more than 2. So the 8, well, it actually has to go. It has to go here. Um, it's the only place it can go. 8 times 3 is 24. Um, 18 plus 6 is also 24. So it also shows me the position of the 6. Um, and, and so then I'm left with thinking, well, where can the 7 go? Now, the reason I go for the 7 is actually both numbers work in this place here. Um, so uh, either number could go here. And actually, the 7 can't go here because 9 subtract 7 equals 2. So that tells me that the order has to be 7 in, uh, in this number sentence and 3 in here, whereas 3 could have gone in either place. The 7 can only go in one place. And there we have it, a solution to, uh, to our main task. So for today's extend task, click on the blue link underneath the video. It looks very similar, but there's one key twist. So have a look. So to fill the blanks this time, which of these sets of numbers can be used to fill the gap? So can set A, those numbers be used to fill the gap? Is that possible? Is there a way? What about set B? What about set C? Um, are they possible for each example? How do you know? Uh, the answers again, as ever, are at the bottom. Um, so I hope you enjoy that challenge um, and I'll be back again tomorrow.